Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Jeet Sina and in today's video we are going to discuss the restriction under article 19. So this is the first video in this concept, this article. So uh, we will discuss the restriction part first, then we will cover all the uh, rights which are granted under all the freedom granted under article 19 that, that are uh, freedom of speech and expression, freedom to assemble peacefully and without arms, freedom to form association or unions, freedom to move freely throughout the territory of India, freedom to reside and settle in any part of India. And last one is freedom to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or business. So reasonable restriction. So uh, as we know that Article 19, 1 A to, uh, 19 clause 1 A to G grant freedom, but the restriction of all these clauses are given. All these clauses are given in Article 19 clause 2 to clause 6, respectively, in the same order in which these are given. So uh, the restriction uh, which uh, has been applied must be reasonable. So there. For this reasonability there the restriction must be imposed by authority of law so there should be an authority of law to impose the restriction on the uh, on restricting these rights granted under article 19 so each restriction must be reasonable so will uh, the main focus will be our reasonability of decision how reasonability is checked third is a restriction must be related to purpose mentioned in article 19 clause 2 to clause 6 this is also very important the purpose of restrict applying restriction on article 19 should be uh, within these clauses so moving to what is reasonable test for reasonability so in chintavan rao versus state of madhya pradesh certain factors for considering reasonableness of restriction is given so we'll look on so chintavan rao versus state of madhya pradesh major factors diye gaye the for calculating for measuring the reasonability of restriction that the duration and extent of restriction the circumstances under which and the manner in which that imposition has been authorized the nature of right infringed the underlying purpose of the restriction imposed the extent and urgency of the evil sought to be achieved sought to be remedied thereby the disproportion of imposition the prevailing condition at that at the time all these considerations in, enter into judicial will. So, Chintaman Rao mein ye sab bola gaya tha ki kis situation mein kya factors honne chahiye reasonable restrictions ke liye. So, court in sab chijo ko consider karegi kya duration hai, kya kis circumstances aur kis manner mein impose kiya gaya restriction, kis type ka right infringe hua hai us restrictions hai aur kya uska jo purpose hai a restriction imposed uska purpose extend and urgency of evils out to be achieved sought to be remedied thereby the disproportion of imposition the prevailing condition at the time so these this is all given in chintaman rao versus state of madhya so our next case is pap nasam labor union versus madhura court limited court have given points in which reasonability of restriction can be checked so if uh, uh, if there are if any restriction are violative of any of this point then we can say that this is not reasonable so we'll look what are those points in papanasanam supreme court has given 11 points so these are the 11 the restriction must not be arbitrary or of excessive nature so as to go beyond the requirement of felt need of society and objects out to be achieved there must be a direct and proximate nexus or a reasonable connection between restriction imposed and the objects out to be achieved no abstract or fixed principle can be laid down to made uh, may, which may have universal principle in all cases such consideration on the question of qualify of reasonableness there for it is expected to vary from case to case the, in interpreting the constitutional provision the court should be alive to be filled the need of society and complex issues facing the people which uh, the legislature intends to solve through effective legislation so pap nasanam ke case mein ye guideline diye gaye the while considering the constitutionality of statutory provision imposing restriction when challenge on the ground of reasonableness imposed by it these are the grounds on which they are they can be challenged so you can take screenshot of these all points now moving to effect versus subject matter test in Bennett Coleman and Company versus Union of India, subject matter test is being applied in this case. So the subject matter test means subject matter means that uh, if a law imposes something on uh, just like you can take example of that if a law is for preventive detention, its subject matter is to uh, capture that person for uh, 
prevention method, uh, for preventing purposes and prevent him from doing uh, some crime prevent him from doing some act which may cause some loss or some damages in future so this is preventive detention so it is the subject matter and uh, the test which is applied that if a test is applied a subject matter test is applied then uh, this test check that uh, in which legislation or which enactment this test is been applied that is called the subject matter test for example agar maan lijiye subject matter test hai preventive detention ke liye तो प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन को इसका सब्जेक्ट मैटर बोला जाएगा और इससे जो भी साइड लाइन चीज़ है जैसे प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन में आर्टिकल 19 के राइट्स वायलेट होते हैं तो उन सब को कंसिडर नहीं किया जाएगा बस यहाँ पे प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन को नज़र रखा जाएगा जबकि इफेक्ट टेस्ट में क्या होता है कि अगर कोई एक लॉ बनाए प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन के लिए लेकिन अगर वो आर्टिकल नाइनटीन को डायरेक्ट या इनडायरेक्ट अफेक्ट कर रहा है तो वो हुआ टेस्ट इफेक्ट टेस्ट इफेक्ट टेस्ट वाट इज इफेक्ट टेस्ट इफेक्ट कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट इन आर सी कूपर वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया इफेक्ट टेस्ट इज अपलाइड सब्जेक्ट मैटर टेस्ट एज वी सीन इज वेरी नैरो एंड इफ यू सी माई वीडियो ऑन आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन यू विल फाइंड आउट वाई सब्जेक्ट मैटर टेस्ट इज नॉट गुड फॉर जजिंग द रिजनेबिलिटी ऑफ एनी इनेक्टमेंट वाई सब्जेक्ट मैटर टेस्ट इज नॉट गुड और दिस सब्जेक्ट मैटर टेस्ट इज बीन अप्लाइड इन ए के गोपालन in which it is found that uh, it is found out that sub uh, there is no relation between article 19 and other clauses of constitution all they are mutually independent this is been said in ak gopalan case ki uh, article 14 19 or 21 mein koi relation nahi hai lekin menka gandhi ke case ke baad article 19 21 22 22 or 14 mein relation establish kiya gaya aur ye paya gaya ki agar kisi bhi ek law ke karan dusra law violate hota hai तो वो बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि उसकी भी रीजनेबिलिटी उसी के तरह चेक किया जाए अगर मान लीजिए आर्टिकल 21 के अंडर कोई भी लॉ वायलेट हो रहा है तो उसकी रीजनेबिलिटी 14 में प्रोवाइडेड रिस्ट्रिक्शन प्रोवाइडेड जो भी वहाँ पे क्लासिफिकेशन है रीजनेबिलिटी चेक जो होती है वहाँ पे उसके अंदर आएगी वैसे ही आर्टिकल नाइनटीन के अंदर भी जो रीजनेबिलिटी चेक है अगर आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी में वॉयलेट हो रहा है तो उसको भी सेम तरीके से चेक किया जा सकता है तो इफेक्ट मैटर इफेक्ट टेस्ट जो है इफेक्ट टेस्ट ये बहुत ही इफेक्ट टेस्ट इज कंसिडर्ड इज एज गुड टेस्ट इफेक्ट टेस्ट इज कंसिडर्ड एज गुड टेस्ट बिकॉज इट गिव अ पर्सन वाइड चांस ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी इफ अ लॉ इज नॉट मेड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ वायलेटिंग एंड स्टिल इट वायलेट्स आर्टिकल नाइनटीन देन इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट Uh, to deal with effect matter test because subject matter test narrowed down the view of all the things. अगर subject matter test अकेले खाली apply हुआ तो वो article नाइनटीन ये relation जो nexus established हुई है उसके लिए ये अच्छा नहीं होगा और article नाइनटीन फोर्टीन ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू एक दूसरे के इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज नहीं है उन लोगों का म्यूचुअल एग्जिस्टेंस नहीं है वो लोग एक दूसरे से इंटरलिंक्ड है जो जैसा कि मेनका गांधी और आरसी सी कूपर केस जो कि बैंक नेशनलाइजेशन केस भी कहा जाता है तो ये थे कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट केस जो इफेक्ट और सब्जेक्ट मैटर टेस्ट तो इस वीडियो में हमने देखा क्या क्या रीजनेबल रिस्ट्रिक्शंस हो सकते हैं तो आशा करता हूँ आपको वीडियो पसंद आया अगर कुछ को, कोई भी सुझाव हो तो आप कॉमेंट सेक्शन में लिखे और कोई भी डाउट है तो आप पूछ सकते कॉमेंट में मैं रिप्लाई करूँगा वहाँ पर थैंक यू